Welcome to our lecture online. In the previous video, we already found one of the three differential equations we're looking for because what we want to do is we want to separate the variables into three different equations with three different differential equations defining, therefore, solutions that can be found to find the final wave equation of the Schrodinger equation. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take what we had in the previous video, which is right here, equal to some constant m sub l squared, where m sub l is the orbital magnetic quantum number, and now we want to separate the two variables r and theta. We can do that by dividing both sides of the equation by sine square of theta and rearranging some terms. So first of all, you can see here that when we divide this by the sine square of theta, this theta is now only a, a term of the variable r, so that's what we have here. Then we're going to divide this here by the sine square of theta, when that disappears, that only contains a variable r, so we're going to put it over here. And then this divided by the sine square of theta now has a term theta in it, and this divided by the sine square of theta gives you a 1 over the function times the sine of theta, move to the right side. Now you can see that on the left side, we have nothing but the variable r. On the right side, we have nothing but the variable theta. We now have two portions of our equation, one on the left side, one on the right side, so we've separated the variables, and again we can say that the only way that those two sides can be equal to each other if they're equal to the same constant. Again, if you don't know what the constant is, just call it c, but with some foresight and understanding what we're going to end up with, we know that we should set the constant equal to l times the quantity l plus 1 where L is a constant that has something to do with the angular momentum of the electron as it goes around the nucleus, and so L is considered what we call the orbital quantum number, which will then define the different quantum mechanical angular momentum states that the electron can be in, and we'll see how that's done later. But once we've done that, we set each of the sides equal to L times L plus 1, and now we have a second differential equation which only has a variable theta in it, and a third differential equation which only has a variable r in it. Together with the previous video, we now have three separate differential equations, where each of the three equations represents each of the three functions that are functions of a single variable r, theta, and phi. Multiplied together, it gives us the original wave function, and of course, if we then find the individual solutions to the three differential equations and multiply those together, we'll have a solution to our original wave equation that describes the motion of the electron in the hydrogen atom. And so that's our function now. Now we have to go look, or our purpose now, or our plan, or whatever. We're trying to get to the solution of the <laughs> wave equation. And so we're now going to look at the three differential equations to see what kind of information we can draw out of it and then we're going to try to solve those differential equations to come up with the correct solution to our original wave equation. So that's the strategy, that's the word I was looking for, the strategy we're after, so stay tuned and you'll see how this ends up. 